What is going on guys, it is Panjano here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for Dead by Daylight. This game has been out for a while now, and it's still one of the most highly requested games to be featured on this channel for an ultimate FPS increase guide, and I finally decided to dive into it to provide a video for you guys on how to achieve the best performance possible with inside of the game, whilst maintaining good visual fidelity and obtaining the best possible gameplay experience. This video will work across the board regardless of what sort of PC you have, whether that's a ultra low end potato PC that's worth pennies, or whether or not you've just gone out and picked up a brand new high end gaming PC. PC, you should be seeing good results across the board. As always guys, if you guys do find this video helpful and are happy with the results, please do leave a like on the video as it helps me out tremendously. If you can leave your results, questions, queries and suggestions for other videos in that comment section down below as well, that'd be absolutely fantastic as it is great to hear from you guys. And if you guys do enjoy content like this and you wish to stay updated with the channel and the latest videos in which are coming out, please do consider pressing that subscription button and that bell notification. So with all that said and done out of the way, let's get straight into the video to keep this as fast and as simple and effective as possible. So starting off, what you guys will need to go ahead and do is navigate into the description down below and download the FPS increase pack in which has been provided. This pack is just a simple compilation of all the config files and other settings and stuff you're going to be using throughout this guide, just so you guys can find it in one neat little package and download it in one safe location. So navigate into the description down below, download the file and put it onto your desktop. You'll then be given a file which is named DBD FPS by Panj. The logo for this file might look different and if so, that's completely fine. What we're going to be doing is actually installing a program called 7-Zip or WinRAR. If you don't already have one of these installed, take yourself over to Google, Google one of the programs, install it, come back to the video and you'll be good to go. Once you guys have got one of those programs installed, what we can then go ahead and do is right click on the file and select the extract here option. Once you guys do that, you'll then be met with a folder on your desktop with an identical name. Inside of that folder, you'll be met with two more folders, which is configs and optimizations, and also your launchoptions.txt document file for the launch options we're going to be using for the game. So starting off with the optimizations, what we're actually going to be doing is installing our customized launch options, which will help further boost FPS with inside of the game. To do this, we're going to be navigating into the FPS pack provided by double clicking, going into the launch options txt file found here, we can then minimize the folder and you'll be met with your launch options or launch commands found here. Now what we're simply going to be doing is going to the right hand side to where it says dash malloc system, highlighting all the way from the right hand side to the left, right clicking and selecting copy. Make sure that everything including all of the dashes have been highlighted. We can then exit out of the launch options.txt. We can then navigate down into Steam, navigate down to Dead by Daylight, right click on Dead by Daylight, go down to the Properties tab. With inside of the Properties tab, what we can then go ahead and do is go over to the General tab. We can start off by going down to Set Launch Options, clicking on that button. With inside of here, you'll then be met with a blank text box. And with inside of that text box, we can right click and hit Paste. It should look very similar to this. If it does, simply go ahead and press OK, and that step has successfully been applied. Following on from that step, what we can now go ahead and do is actually apply some optimizations to the game application files, which is actually very simple to do. We're going to stay inside of the properties tab we opened up earlier, this time navigating up to the top and going to local files, navigating down to the browse local files tab and clicking on that. We're going to start off by going to the Dead by Daylight application, right clicking, going down to the properties tab. We're then going to navigate inside of the compatibility tab with inside of there. We're going to find the option for disable full screen optimizations, check that, going down to change high DPI settings and also checking the option for override high DPI scaling behavior performed by, checking that option, pressing OK, then navigating down to apply and pressing OK. We can then repeat this step by going into the dead by daylight folder found here, double clicking, this time going into binaries, Win64, and again right clicking on the dead by daylight Win64 shipping file found here, right clicking, properties, compatibility, disable full screen optimizations, change high DPI, and override high DPI scaling behavior performed by. OK, apply, and OK. Once you guys are done inside of there, what we can then go ahead and do is actually exit out of the game folder as that optimization has now been completed. We can then proceed to also close out of the game folder with inside of Steam and minimize Steam. Now at this point in the video, what we can now go ahead and do is actually install the optimized game config files, and this is very easy to do. What we're going to be doing is navigating to the bottom left of our PCs and clicking on the Windows button. Once you guys have done that, simply go ahead and type in percent app data percent just like so and go ahead and press the enter key with inside of there a folder will open up we're going to navigate up to the top of that folder and select where it says app data once you guys have clicked that go down to the local folder with inside of there by double clicking and then with inside of the local folder we're then going to be looking for the dead by daylight folder double clicking going into saved config windows no editor and with inside of here you'll be met with a bunch of these configuration files now what we're simply going to be doing is dragging this folder over to the right hand side to get it out of the way we can then proceed to open into the fps increase pack in which we downloaded earlier on by double clicking Dragging this over to the left hand side just to keep this nice and simple. We're then going to be going inside of the configs folder with inside of the FPS increase pack we downloaded earlier. And with inside of there you'll then be met with an engine file, game user settings and scalability. Now it's very easy to install these. What you simply need to do is simply highlight all of the files with inside of the FPS increase pack. Drag them over into this folder and hit replace the files in this destination. Once that's then been completed you've successfully installed your optimized game config files. 
we can now go ahead and actually exit out of both of those folders. Now proceeding on from there, what we can now go ahead and do is actually boot into the game to further tweak and optimize our settings to tailor them towards our PC specs. This is where you guys will be able to find your fine balance of whether or not you wish to bump up visual quality or lower visual quality in exchange for higher performance. So to do this, what we're going to be doing is simply navigating down into Steam, going to Dead by Daylight and booting into the game. Now that you guys have booted into the game, you should notice that the 60 FPS hard cap within inside of the game has been removed and you should notice that your FPS is higher. Now this will not represent your final FPS as there's still a few more tweaks you're going to be doing after this step and we're also going to be tweaking our game settings now so don't pay attention to what the FPS value is yet as we're not completely finished with tweaking the game. To tweak the game successfully and to do it properly, I'd recommend going over to the help and tutorial section and going up to the top left hand side and selecting the survivor how to play. This loads us into a decent-ish demo map in which we can use to further tweak our settings and see what the changes have in terms of FPS and visual quality in a decent game state environment. So once you guys have loaded into the game, what we're going to be doing is actually going ahead and pressing the escape button. We're going to go over to our settings found here on the top left hand side. And what we can start off by doing is going over to our quality preset. Now the good thing about Dead by Daylight is that every time you change something with inside of here, you'll instantly be able to see how the graphics change and also the effect it has on your FPS. Now on the right hand side of the screen now, you'll see the recommended values in which you should set these two according to your system specs. So for any of you guys running on low end PCs, I recommend going over to the quality settings presets and selecting low. For you guys out there who are running on low end PCs, and medium end PCs, low will be the best setting for you. For any of you guys who are on a medium end PC all the way up to a ultra high end system, I'd recommend going over to the medium quality preset as this enables a lot of the visual candy but also keeps the FPS really, really nice. Turning the quality preset to high doesn't change much visually but it does take away from a lot of the FPS and I wouldn't really recommend going higher than medium. Once you've then selected your quality preset, we can then go ahead down to the resolution option, which is a resolution scale. Now this is actually one of the most important options with inside of here in which will determine how much FPS you get with inside of this guide. Again, on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see the recommended setting according to your system specs in which I recommend you set this to. So for any of you guys out there running on an ultra low end system, I'd recommend setting your resolution scale down to around about 30%. For any of you guys out there who are running on low end systems, I'd recommend setting this to around about 50%. For anyone out there running on sort of low end to medium end systems that might be a little bit older, I'd go up to around about 66%. And for anyone running on around about a medium end system to a higher end system but you want really good FPS, set this to a value of 89%. You can go up to 100 but do expect to see lower FPS. Once you guys have got those options set, what we can then go ahead and do is simply go ahead and press the back button as they are applied automatically to your game and you can see the real time changes to your FPS in the top right hand side of the screen. At this point you might want to be using the Steam overlay or something like Fraps to see what your FPS is inside of the game. It's very easy to use either of them to actually monitor your FPS. And again, I'd spend around about a few minutes tinkering around with the settings and finding what you like visually and performance wise. Once you guys are happy with how everything visually looks with inside of the game and you've squeezed every bit of FPS you can with inside of the game, what we can then go ahead and do is simply go ahead and tab out right click on the game and close the window. We can then quit the game as we can now further boost our FPS by going ahead and actually sorting out some settings with inside of Windows and further optimizing our PCs toward gaming performance. This is completely safe to do, nothing will harm your PC, nothing will void any warranties or increase any heat and highly recommended. So alongside the first steps with inside of this video, if you couple them with the next few steps in which you're going to be shown, you should be seeing some phenomenal results. So starting off with inside of these optimizations, what we're actually going to be doing is navigating to the bottom left hand side and we're going to type in power. Once you guys have typed in power, we're then going to be looking for any of the options with inside of here with the battery with the small cord going around it. It should say something along the lines of power plan, but it doesn't really matter what it says. Just look for this logo and click on any of the options. With inside of the tab which opens up, simply go ahead to the directory tab at the top and select where it says power options. With inside of here, go ahead to the drop down menu where it says show additional power plans. And with inside of here, we're going to be looking at our power plans. For the majority of you watching this video, you should be seeing balanced high performance and power saver. But the main power plan on which we're going to be focusing on today is actually the ultimate performance power plan. Now for everyone watching this video who's running on Windows 10, you can actually unlock this power plan with inside of Windows 10 extremely easily. There's going to be a video in the card on the top right hand side of the screen now. And if you click on that card, it will take you over to the video in which will teach you guys how to unlock the power plan with inside of Windows 10 so you can enable it with inside of your power plan options. It's extremely easy to do, it's very quick to do, I've just included it in that video over there as it is an optional step but a highly recommended one. For any of you guys out there who do not wish to follow that video and you just wish to follow this guide, you can go with the high performance power plan as that should do a good enough job, but in every single case regardless of what sort of PC you're running on, I'd always recommend the ultimate performance power plan for everyone. To select the power plan you're going to be going with, just simply go ahead and highlight it. Once it's highlighted, what we can then go ahead and do is exit out of the power options. What we can now go ahead and do piggybacking off of that step is actually go into the FPS pack provided once again again, this time going into the optimizations folder, and we'll then find an application which is titled CPU Core Parking Setup. 
With inside of here, we can then double click on the setup and you'll see a brief explanation as to what this program does in the bottom of the screen now. And what CPU core parking with inside of Windows is, is Windows will typically limit your CPU usage to around about 80%, meaning that it can take an extra 20% of your CPU power for additional programs running in the background. This often means when you guys are in hectic situations with inside of games and your FPS drops down a lot, it only really means that you're getting around about 80% of your CPU power. Whereas if you unpark your CPU cores, you'll have access to the full 100% and get all of the performance in which you've paid for. I've yet to see a PC react negatively towards this, and it's one of the main things I recommend everyone to install on your PC. So to install it, simply go ahead and press next. Accept the terms to the license agreement and press next. Next and install. After a few moments, the program will then be installed. Go ahead and select the launch option down here and press finish. To start off, what we're going to be doing is going ahead to our power data plan in the top left hand side, going into the drop down menu, and with inside of here, we're going to be setting this option to match the power plan we set in the previous step. So, for you guys that went for the high performance power plan, you'll select high performance. If you went for the ultimate performance power plan, go with ultimate performance. Once that's been set, what we can then go ahead and do is go down to core parking index, drag this slider found here, which might be set to a different value than 100%. If it is, that's fine. Drag the slider, drag it all the way up to 100%. We can then proceed to repeat that step for the frequency scaling index. Again, dragging the slider all the way up to 100%. And for some of you watching this video, you might not have this option, but if you do, go to the turbo boost index and again, drag this up to 100%. Once that's then been done, go ahead and press the apply button to apply all of the fixes, press OK, and we can then exit out of the program, and it's just that simple and easy to do. Now at this point in the video, what we're going to go ahead and do just to make sure that Windows has successfully applied all of those optimizations, and we're on a good fresh boot of Windows ready to continue on with the last and final step, is we're actually going to go ahead and restart our systems. So to do this, what we're going to be doing is navigating to the bottom left hand side, clicking on the Windows button, right clicking on the power button above the Windows button, and selecting the restart option. We'll restart our PCs, come back to this video, sign into Steam, and get ready to continue on with the last step. And the final step is to actually once again go into the FPS pack provided, this time going into the optimizations folder, and this time we're going to be grabbing the timer resolution application included onto our desktop. Once you put it onto your desktop and for a brief explanation and a demonstration on how to use this program, what this program basically does is it lowers the amount of input latency between the hardware in your system, the operating system, and the game application itself, allowing you guys for a lot less stutter, a lot less input lag, so everything you're doing on screen in terms of mouse movements and keyboard inputs feels a lot more responsive and snappier. This often helps reduce stuttering as well, lowering frame times and increasing frame rates. This is the second most important thing I recommend for everyone to install on their PCs alongside CPU unparking, and it solves so many issues and increases people's FPS across the board on pretty much every game possible. So I'd highly recommend using it and it's incredibly safe to use as well. So for a demonstration on how you'll use the program is what you'll do is before before you boot any game, in this case we're going to be booting Dead by Daylight, but you can use this for any game, what you'll do is you'll boot into the program by double clicking, select the maximum button to set the lowest amount of input latency possible, minimise the program but ensure that it's still running, at this point you'll boot into your game, in this case it's going to be Dead by Daylight, boot into the game, play it for however long you wish to do so, once you're done playing, even if it's hours later, close the game, bring the program back up, select default, and you'll then exit out of the program. So assuming that you're at this point in the video and we're completely done with all the optimizations, the only last thing left to do is to actually go ahead and boot into time resolution, select maximum, go down into Steam, go to Dead by Daylight, and press play. And there you guys have it, my ultimate FPS increase guide for Dead by Daylight. Again, let me know of any results, questions, queries, and suggestions in that comment section down below, as it is always fantastic to hear from you guys and any feedback you might have, the results in which you have, and your suggestions for other games for me to follow. And alongside that, if you guys are happy with the results in which you've received from this video, if you can leave a like on the video, it would help me out tremendously. And again, if you do enjoy this type of content, please do consider pressing that subscription button and the bell notification, as it will help me out greatly. With all that said and done, guys, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. I've been Panjano, and I'm out.